Hello everybody, my name is Bea and I welcome you to Curiosity, Creativity and Beyond. Today I'm very excited because we are going to learn and sketch together the bell pepper. <laughs> As you can see, I went to the supermarket and I purchased a red, orange and yellow pepper. They're also called sweet pepper, capsicum, but we're just going to call them here pepper. And um, they are technically fruits, but normally we commonly reuse them as, as vegetable ingredient or a side dish. So, all the things that I have on my desk is an eraser, regular eraser. I have different pencils. I have an HB pencil. An HB pencil is not hard, it's not soft. And it creates grayish lines and it also scratch a little bit the paper. I have a 2B pencil. A 2B pencil makes slightly darker lines. It's slightly softer than the HB and if we pass our finger on top of it we smudge it. This is something that we might actually want. Then I have a 4B pencil. Right away you can tell that with the same pressure it creates darker lines and if I pass my finger it smudges so much more. Finally I have two blue pencils. These blue pencils are called non-photo blue and it doesn't really matter what type of brand you have. But the non-photo blue, and I'm going to write it here, non-photo blue pencil. As the name <laughs> explains, it's a blue pencil. Which needs, by the way, a little bit of sharpening here. There we go. With this non-photo blue pencil, what I like to do is sketch out before I run into using the pencil, mainly because I can really be extremely soft with it. I don't know if I'm drawing a, this shape that has this real contour here, whatever. I make a lot of lines and then finally I'm like, oh yeah, I think, I think, hmm, I think this is going to be what I want. Then I can go with my pencil and do my my drawing and as you can see the blue belongs to the background it's barely noticeable and I can use my pencil without having to be erasing all the time what else do I have as you can see I have a sharpener this one the, the good thing about this is that all the stuff remains inside so the risk of making a mess is diminished. I have two different rulers. One is transparent plastic and the other one is stainless steel. Um, the main difference, uh, there are several differences, but this one is just in centimeters. But the advantage is that I can measure things and I can still see through. This one has measurements in centimeters on one side and in inches on the other one but I cannot see through. So each has its advantages and disadvantages. These two, just in case. And then as you can see, I have a cutting board and a knife that I keep in this case so I don't cut myself. And yes, that is very cool. I have a bug box because you never know what you're gonna find inside a pepper. <laughs> So if I find anything inside that moves, I am going to put it on my back box and I am going to observe it. This is a magnifying lens. My bug is going to stay here inside so I can observe it. I can measure it because the back box has a grid and I can have a lot of fun watching and drawing insects, bugs, all sorts of things uh, that you can find 
that otherwise would crawl away um, <laughs> around your desk. We don't know what we're going to find, but just in case, I'm fully prepared. Also, I have kitchen paper just in case it gets messy. So, are we ready? So, let's take a look at this red pepper. This red pepper has a long stalk that connects him to the rest of the plant. All the nutrients come through the stem, also called peduncule, into the pepper. This part here is called the calyx. After the flower becomes the, um, the fruit. And the rest, the rest of the pepper is called pericarp. We will write all these things down. So the first thing I notice, not only super shiny, but there are some ridges that go all the way from the top into the apex. The apex is where all these lines converge. Out of curiosity, I would like to measure how wide and how tall this pepper is. So in centimeters, and I know it's a little bit wider on the top, so let's see, on the top it's six and a half centimeters. At the bottom is approximately four and a half. So I'm gonna write that down. I'm just gonna make a tiny, tiny thumbnail. And it's called a thumbnail because it's kind of the same size of a thumb. Um, so I'm not worried about the, um, the exact uh, anatomy of the pepper, but I just want to make sure that I know that from here to here we said this was yeah a good six centimeters and at the bottom I see here four and a half centimeters and how tall is this pepper? I'm sure there are larger peppers in the supermarket, but this one is seven and a half. So I'm just going to measure 7.5 centimeters. This is a slightly wider than this. So in my study of the pepper, I would really like to study this view, which is called the side view. I would like to study a little bit this view which is the plan or overhead or top view and then we're going to use the cutting board to create cross sections so for that let's make a grid so with my ruler and my 2b pencil i'm going to create a grid and this grid is going to allow me to draw all the bits and pieces that I'm going to study on the red pepper. And I'm going to put um, a template so you don't have to worry about this at home. You just can print it and start from there. For approximately, I would like something that looks a little bit like this. So this is a grid. And what I'm going to do, as we said, I'm going to include uh, a side view from the side, a top view. And we're going to leave this for the cross section. So, when I look at the side of this pepper, and I'm going to put this like this so you can see it well. Let's choose a side that is interesting. How about that? That looks cool. So when I look at this pepper, I'm going to use my blue pencil. I see that it's a little bit wider. So I'm just going to put this wider. And it's a little bit narrower at the bottom. 
So you see I'm using this blue pencil to almost draw raggedy lines. It doesn't have to be one to one, so it can be smaller, it can be bigger. The important thing is that you understand that what you're seeing correlates to what you are drawing. I see there's the stem. Ideally, we would like to be inside the square. Um, so yeah, once I have the basic proportions of the drawing, let's see, let's draw this pepper. And what I'm doing now is I'm just doing a contour. And the contour, it consists on drawing what's outside the pepper, outside. So in this case, I'm drawing the lines that surround the pepper. So if I look at this pepper, I see that there is a curve here. I'm not worried about what's inside the pepper. And as you see, I'm making short lines. I'm not making long lines. This is not meant to be done in three seconds. I see that this pepper has little bit of a curve here and I also noticed that this curve is lower than this so I might actually I'm gonna sorry I'm gonna use you eraser thank you very much I'm gonna lower that curve a little bit more because now I can do the other curve a little bit higher. Do you see that? That goes a little bit lower and that's a little bit higher. And it's also a very, very straight line there. And I'm not worried about what's inside. Just by looking at the outside, I can see that a ridge is coming from there. And once I come here, I uh, have my pepper, come to here, and let's compare. This is the line that I made before, this one here. How does it compare to the curve here? So I think it's also a little bit higher, and I have different curves. I have one here, one here, and one here. But I don't want to make uh, a spring because that's not what I'm seeing. I see that this curve goes a little bit behind and I would say this is the highest. This is the medium. And this is the lowest. So let's see if I can do that. I this is the medium and the highest and then this lower one. I think I'm going to use a tiny bit of eraser here. So this is my contour. And yes, I left the stem the stock out. So let's let's do that. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is notice that this stem, if I made an imaginary line that connects the tip of the stem to the pepper, I have a very interesting shape here. So I call this negative space. If I make an imaginary line and I'm going to change to my my blue so I can sketch out this if I made an imaginary line I had a very interesting space here that is called negative space and why am I doing this because then it's very easy to connect the stem knowing that I have to leave that negative space here so when I use my 2b pencil I can follow 
yes and I can then connect my stem if you've noticed um, the stem does not connect like this like two parallel lines the stem has a little bit of a widening at the bottom and that makes sense because all the nutrients come this way and they have to disperse so it makes sense that the lower part of the stem is a little bit wider so we have to look at this very well and we always look back and forth back and forth so we have our pepper one also one other thing that you see now that we've done the contour is to draw the inside of the pepper the inside lines that we see I don't know if you notice but I just noticed right now that we have two ridges very close to one another here so now that I'm drawing lines inside the pepper I have noticed this ridge here that overlaps this other and I also noticed that remember this ridge here that was not as high as this one and not as high as this one a little bit lower that also continues and it continues and it continues and it continues all the way here it kind of curves it does a very very interesting s shape and i'm very glad that it connects with this ridge that i drew before then remember this other ridge that separates these two well as i can see here this goes all the way down goes a little bit in and then connects right here what i had done with my contour lines so i don't keep my eyes out of the pepper there's a little bit in that here and then i have my pepper so we have now our side view of a pepper let's go to the top view and the reason why i made a grid is because if i make an imaginary line and i can use my blue pencil for that or i can use my ruler too why not let's use our ruler to make two lines from the widest part of the pepper up this measurement is going to be the exact same measurement as the width of the pepper seen from the top and uh, let's see if i can put the pepper in a way that i can draw it so now that I put the pepper stable on the back box <laughs> so I don't have to hold it and now that we have these two lines coming from the pepper we can actually draw the top view and have you noticed there are like four one two three and four main parts or shapes so you know what i'm going to start with a square and because this is my blue pencil i can draw all i want very lightly so at least i make sense of what i have in front of me i know there is a central portion that kind of looks like this then i have petals of a flower one two that comes a little bit here three that goes lower than this and cats a little bit here and four and one thing that is interesting 
is that it looks like a flower. This it looks like a flower to me. So once I have the main, main silhouette, the main shapes blocked, I can come back to my 2B pencil. And I can go and draw a little bit of detail. I have a stem. I could have done it in blue as well. So this is my stem. Seen from the top, I see a circular, almost oval shape, and around it, I see that the calyx has very interesting shape I know that my stem goes on top of the calyx so I have to make sure that I draw what I see the stem is a little bit dry out, but I can still see some lines, all the fibers of the pepper. I also see detail on the calyx. I see like ripples, like radial ripples made out of the contrast between the light that hits and the shadow. They're definitely radial and they come from the outer part of the calyx into the very center of the stem. One thing that I really find useful is to start naming the structure so I don't forget. So I know that this is called stem or stalk or also peduncle. I also know that this part is called the calyx. Just so I don't forget. And now as we did with the side view we are just going to continue with my contour first. So with my pencil, I, I also noticed that this part here goes out a little bit more. You see if I put a, if I put a pencil, I can still see a little bit of red here. So that means that it comes that way a little bit. Then, I continue drawing my pepper. Hope I'm not covering my drawing a lot with my arm. This is a little bit higher than this. So I need to make sure that I compare the two. my negative space here. This negative space allows me to make these shapes and then this goes down a little bit and then joins here. Doesn't it look like a flower? Ah, it looks a little bit like a flower to me. Oh, and we also can see this too here. So again, this is our top view overhead view or plan view. So after we've done the contour like in this pepper, let's draw a little bit the ridges, the structure, because all these shapes have a reason. If there is a shape like this, if we look at the pepper, this ridge is really connected this with the calyx. There's some 
shapes that are clearer because of the lighting because as you can see this shadow it's very pronounced the shadow is very pronounced whereas these is not as pronounced but i can still see that there are some divisions so i'm going to try to put this there's definitely one division here and i can see a division here I don't see a division all the way there, but I definitely see a little bit here. I also see how the pepper continues here. I also see a division here. But I don't see it all the way there, so I'm just going to suggest it like that. I also see some there and some are just gonna leave I suggested because I cannot see that very well and as you can see even when I suggest lines one thing that is important is I'm not just gonna make everything regular and the same space because in nature things happened in very random arbitrary ways so a thing would look organic if we look at nature we will realize that structures are much more diverse than what we think we're seeing so if i just made lines straight lines that have the same distance one for another this would look like something that has been built by a machine whereas in nature there's much more diversity and variation we just have to observe and draw what we see so as you see all the contours whenever i have drawn a contour that changes its shape when I look at the pepper is because there's something happening inside and by doing this also your drawing is getting a lot of volume it's no longer a flat shape so you can see our pepper from the top view is getting a lot of volume and we can see that this structure the stem is on top of the calyx and the calyx is on top of the pericarp oh that was a, a word that i need to write down because otherwise i'm gonna forget pericarp and i could have done the exact same thing here but i'm not gonna draw i'm not gonna write here arrows because we are gonna use these for another cross section So, in our grid, we still have two empty spaces for two more views. One, we're going to do a cross-section along the longitudinal axis. What is that? Well, our pepper, as we measured here, has two axes. One is the long one. That's called the longitudinal axis and it has another axis which is this the one we measure here and that is called the short axis so let's do some cats so first i'm gonna move my sharpener here i'm gonna take my red pepper out of my back box I'm going to place it here. We're going to use one of these peppers for the cross section along the uh, short axis and these for the longitudinal axis cut. So this is the moment now that um, you might want to call one of your parents to help you out to cut the pepper. So the first thing I do is uh, take the protector out of the knife 
and very carefully I'm going to choose one of the ridges and I'm going to try to cut right by the middle. how well it went ah, let's see oh well wasn't that bad <laughs> so when I opened my pepper the first thing I noticed I noticed is that the stem as we knew opens a little bit to allow all the nutrients to distribute along the, the actual um, fruit we're gonna find structures inside that we are going to name this white part here that kind of ends in seeds that is going to be the placenta i know you've seen you've heard that animals mammals have placentas well guess what peppers have placentas too so i have to decide which side i am going to choose to draw because do you see that line there that is where the capsizing glands are. And that is what gives the pepper that spiciness, especially the types of pepper that are very, 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 very spicy. So I definitely want to include that on my drawing of a pepper. So do you remember when we extended our lines upwards? So we would make sure that our top view had the same width as the upper part of the pepper well on our longitudinal section we would like it to be the same height first very important with the help of one of your parents we're going to put the knife back in his case so we are now safe to continue so as we've done before i'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to make sure that I extend the top of the pepper and the bottom of the pepper. So now I have that my drawing should be that tall. Yes, we also know that at the top, we can measure the drawing and say this is five centimeters. So if I start measuring and i need to mark my zero so one two three four five and you notice that i put my some rulers have the zero right at the edge and some have a white space so what i did it, i put the transparent ruler right at the edge of my grid so i know that as long as i put my ruler at the edge of the grid i will have zero at the same length is this a tip so one two three four and five so now i join these two lines and i know that my pepper in cross section should have these measurements let's see how this pepper behaves again so we can see this better. I'm going to put it on the bug box and I'm going to put it here so everyone can, can see it. There we go. I'm going to start with the contour. Okay. As we did before, uh, the stem goes a little bit down. And then if you've noticed, It almost has the same, almost has the same shape as, as my pepper here. But because we cut it, it will have a different contour. It doesn't have to be exactly the same because we actually cut it. Like, I put it like this I guess this was something like this but we cut it okay so 
with my blue pencil and I'm just drawing the contour. I don't worry about what's inside. I'm just drawing what is outside, the contour. And I'm going to write what I'm doing so we all know how to spell it. Contour. So, one thing I notice is that this is a very straight edge here. Very straight, straight, and then boom, goes like this. Straight, it's like very. very angled. The lower part is here and I cannot go beyond here because this is my my maximum height. Then I see that this middle part is not in the middle. It's a little bit towards the right side of the cut. And then, ooh, then we have a very nice, almost like a semicircle. I'm going to go very slowly because I made this curve here, but I don't think it's like that. And that's why I like using the blue because I can make all these corrections and then this comes inside a little bit. I can make all these corrections and then how interesting. Do you notice this one, two, the stem, three and four. So let's see. I think the easiest way for me to draw that is going to be to find the middle point because it kind of looks like in the middle. If I put my ruler, let's see. Yeah, it's quite in the middle. So I can see that if this is 5, 5, if I divide 5 in 2 is 2.5. So 1, 2, 2.5. That's going to be the middle. So I can then make this curve, curve, shapes. And I'm still using my blue. So let's change now that I have the main contour. Let me refine this. You know, sometimes a pencil is very pointy. You might want this is a trick. You might want to do lines like this. So instead of drawing a line, a very, very pointy line, you can use a much more friendly, friendly line. So as you can see with my pen, now I can go over. my drawing it has a very interesting here at the at the bottom do you see that tiny boop and another one here so I don't want to exaggerate it but I definitely would like that to be in my study and there is also a dark piece here that I will not want to miss once I add the inside of the pepper then we have almost straight line here and again one two the stem three and four one two the stem three and four that's my contour let's see what's inside let me change back to my blue pencil First thing I notice is that approximately, let's see, approximately a fourth in, if this is nine centimeters, around three, so a third, less than a third, and I have to measure here again because there are different measurements. This is six and a half, so approximately here. Okay. 
I have a yellow structure and a pink structure and I have a hole. I have an opening. And the opening is not just an oval. If you notice, it has, yeah, it's an oval at the top, but it's a little bit different at the bottom. So I'm going to just draw by now an oval and I will go inside with my pencil to refine it. But definitely one structure, and this is why I chose this half, is because it has the capsizing glands in that ridge. So I'm going to definitely include that. And then we can see that there is definitely a transition between the red and the more orangey pinky bit. So let's let's draw that. Now that I'm inside, I can go inside and draw this and note how this is kind of not a, a straight line. It's like a wavy, wavy line. And this line becomes the contour of this opening. So we still have this orangey, lighter orangey line around. So we need to make sure we need to leave a space there. And one thing I notice is that, remember that tiny boop that we saw here? That orangey part also follows that. Those are the things that we need to pay attention to. So we have our orangey beads. We have our red beads. And then on this side, the stem comes here. And then we have our orangey part. Let's use our pencil. One thing that I noticed right away is that the calyx, these calyx that we saw here that we could barely see here are cut. So we now see the calyx on both sides, really. And, hold and behold, it coincides with the end of the green part and the transition into the placenta. So we could have only seen this by cutting into the pepper. because we made a cut, we still have, we still see the outer part of the pepper and our cross section of the pepper. And at the bottom part, we no longer see the outer, we just see the cross section and that area that is so interesting so interesting. That opening into the inside of the pepper. Now with our pencil, we can refine that opening. And we realize that that ridge, what we call the capsizing glands, are also located here. And I think I'm going to need to use my eraser because I forgot that there is red and there is an orange part here. So let me use my eraser. I was so excited that I didn't notice that the orangey part
continues like this. And this is my ridge. And now, because I'm not going to draw anything here, I'm going to make a label so I don't forget that this is the capsizing glands. And we all know what those are. Those are the seeds. And they are quite interesting. And I know there is the idea that if we just make this, those are the, the seeds. But if you look at it more carefully, some seeds overlap each other. So these seeds are in the front and there are seeds that are in the back. Some seeds are seen from the front view and some seeds are seen from the side. The same thing we did here. So some seeds look very thin, but it's because we're seeing them from a different angle. And finally, we are going to add some detail to our placenta. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a very distinct conic shape here that I'm going to try to translate. Oops, I made a line there. I don't really worry much about any extra lines because I'm having a lot of fun drawing this. And also, don't forget that these ridges continue and they overlap each other. So you actually have volume. So let's not forget to add a label for the placenta. And now that we have cut the pepper, we can see that the pepper has, we call it the pericarp, right? All these is the pericarp, but there are three different layers on the pericarp. And to explain this, I'm going to look at this closer. And in order to look at this closer, I'm going to choose one piece of my pepper. And it's for me, for example, this and I'm going to make a square. You see how hard I drew? This square, I'm going to make it bigger and I'm going to draw it here. And I'm going to make the same square, the same exact square, but bigger. And you can use the ruler too. I could, I could totally use the ruler. It's not. There we go. Have my, my square. And to make this be easy to understand that it comes from here, I'm going to connect this to this. And I'm going to connect this to this. Now I know that whatever is here is here bigger. And if I want to even make it clear, I'm going to put here enlarge pericarp section. And I'm going to draw exactly what I saw here. This is my pericarp. And why did I enlarge it? Because there are three different layers on the pericarp. And remember, this is the inside. So I can also write here inside. And remember, this is the outside. So I can also write here outside. 
there are three different layers. So I'm going to divide these in three. Oops. And what are they called? Oh, well, I'm going to label them. The most inner layer is called the endocarp. The middle one is called mesocarp. And the outermost outer one is called the exocarp. It's funny, right? They all end in carp. And the only thing that really changes is the beginning of the word. Endo, meso, and exo. And all of them form the pericarp. Finally, you notice we left a cross section here. The cross section that we were going to do on the short axis. So for that purpose, we're going to put our friend Pepper. Oh, we forgot to label the seeds. So now we're going to again call one of our parents because we're going to cut again a pepper. Let's go with the yellow one. And this time, instead of making a cut along the longitudinal axis, which is what we did here, we're going to do a cut along the short axis, which is here. We're going to cut it like this. So again, with the help of one of our parents, we're going to make this cut. So I'm going to cut, I could cut at the top, in the middle or at the bottom, but I think I'm going to go just at the middle. So let's see. Oh, nice. Oh my goodness. So when we open our pepper, we found that this pepper has two baby peppers inside. And this is very interesting. It's a phenomenon that happens, is normal, when a fruit develops a fruit that is exactly like it, but inside of it, like a baby fruit. And the only thing is that the fruit inside doesn't have any seeds. And this has a very, very interesting name. But first, I'm going to safely put the cup on my knife. And when we find a fruit inside a fruit, that is called internal, because it happens inside, proliferation, which means growth. This internal proliferation, this baby pepper also is called, and this is a very interesting word, Par fe no carpi parthenocarpic pepper growth. I knew we would find something interesting inside the pepper. As you can see, both halves of the pepper are very interesting. And I am going to draw this one. I know this pepper is a little bit larger than the red one. I'm going to put it here so we can see it. So I'm not going to worry too much about following the exact width. But I still wouldn't like to leave the grid. So just for my own... Just for my own... I'm going to make some lines so at least I draw my cross section within the grid. And again, as you see, I have my blue paper, my blue um, pencil, and I'm going to bring this here so we can see it. And the first thing that catches my eye is that it has three very distinct 
curved lines in the contour. So let's draw those things. Move it so the shadow doesn't stay on the way. So you see I use my blue pencil just to draw a circle because I don't really know how to start that complex shape just like that. But I know that all these three curved shapes, they all converge in the middle. So what if I found the middle of my circle and I made three lines going outside? When you do that in a circle, the line that connects the center with the outer line of a circle, that's the radius. So as we can see here, we have one, two, and three. So let me, one goes like this, one goes like this, a little bit like this rather, and the other one like that. So at least I am able to divide this circle in three. As we see the center has a mass, a shape. I'm not going to worry about that. What I wanted was to find what are these points where these circular shapes meet. So now that I have those, I am going to continue with my contour as we did previously. I love how this line enters through here and continues through here. So let's continue with our contour lines. I also like how this shape bends because you might think, and I'm going to draw this with this so you know, you might think that it's just like quee, 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 but it's not. It has, it has a lot of variation. Again, in nature, things are more diverse than we think they are. We just need to be attentive and welcoming to all that diversity. Have you noticed here how this shape goes a little bit out? So it's not like whoop, it has a little bit out and then comes in. So. I think I could do that, staying in the grid, I think, I think, I suspect that's, that is my, my, my contour. So as we said before, let's go inside and see, as you see, we have certain thickness, certain thickness that I want to make sure that I include and it kind of follows very well the outer contour. Also here, the outer contour. You see that I'm stopping right there, right? Because there's a lot of stuff happening there. This is quite interesting because there's more thickness here than here. So I want to make sure that I observe that. This is one of these things that are very variable. And then the interesting part here is that where these round shapes meet, Remember what we drew here, the capsaicin glands? Well, there they are. They are arranged in radial symmetry. That's how we learn how to draw them. And they have a little bit of a thicker area here, thinner in the middle, and then they all meet in the middle. And they have a very, 
very beautiful conic shape. So let's make sure that we reflect that. It's like one of those clocks. Remember those? Those clocks, the sand clocks. That the sand falls from one part to the other. And it tells you when an hour has passed by. But I think it looks like that. So I'm still with my blue pencil because I'm still trying to figure out the different shapes and how things are connected to one another. And as you notice, I barely, barely use the razor. I like this blue pencil idea very much. And we can create negative spaces inside. Have you noticed this space has a contour? So if you have difficulties drawing that, you can look at that space as well and trying to draw it. As you notice, I'm not looking at the seeds yet. I'm just looking at this very, very bright yellow. Make sure that I have all the parts that I need. And once I'm done with that, let's draw our baby peppers. There's one there and then it's one there. So let's make sure that we draw everything that we find. Who knew that we would find a baby pepper? Two baby peppers. I'm just gonna draw them there. And then we have a bunch of seeds. A bunch of them. So with a blue pencil, I'm just going to block the area where the seeds are. So when I go with my pencil, I can add detail. So I'm going to now continue, finalize these. And I really, really, really like that we found two baby peppers inside our pepper. Remember the thin area here and how it becomes a little bit thicker here and this there's a change in angle here and another change here and how careful I am that I'm always looking there and looking at the page, looking there and looking at the page. And we go again with another hourglass-like structure. And I also see a little bit of a scene there, so I'm going to try to make sure that I reflect that. And I know the seeds are on top, in front of the baby pepper. So I'm going to start, and they're attached to this part structure here, the placenta. So I'm going to make sure that I don't miss that. And you don't have to draw all the seeds, but definitely enough to suggest that that's where they are. There's less, less seeds here and actually some are more seed looking than these ones. They're a bit dead. So let's make sure that we draw them in different perspective. Remember when we talk about that 
a seed seen from the side might look like this and maybe maybe looking a little bit tilted might look like an ellipse so make sure that you observe and if you don't find any seed that looks like that you don't have to invent it but i'm drawing my seeds there and i'm joining all these structures the capsizing glands to the placenta and i'm drawing my tiny baby pepper and my other tiny baby pepper and guess what the baby peppers are green because they're not exposed to the sunlight and actually a pepper when it starts growing is green because the seeds are not developed yet and they're hard to see because they have the same color as the leaves of the pepper plant and as the sun helps the pepper mature it gains its final color and now a pepper can be seen from anywhere and an animal might be able to spot it and eat it that's what the pepper wants he wants to be eaten so the animal can spread all the seeds and make more pepper plants but as we said before these parthenocarpic pepper growths do not have seeds so now i kind of end ended with my um cross section of this uh, pepper but i don't want to end without adding a little bit of the texture that i see in each of these cavities that by the way i should name them because they have a name each is called a locule and in this case we have one two and three three locules so let's make sure that i add because i see that there's some ridges that go right into the bottom of the pepper i see that go from here that is the very bottom to here they go from here to here so we just need make sure that we add and clearly we're going to see the ones closer to us better than the ones at the very bottom and i don't just want to make lines around it because nature makes things more diverse and interesting so that is my cross section i'm going to name again some structure so i don't forget that these are the seeds i'm going to name again the capsizing cap sizing glands and because i only found this on this view i'm going to make another arrow and i'm going to call this a baby pepper so let me put this aside and i know i made some annotations here and i made some annotations here but i have completed my top view my side view with the longitudinal section that has a zoom into the three layers of the red pepper pericarp of the pericarp then i have a cross section along the short axis and to explain these on my diagram what i could do is to with my blue i can add 
these lines here that will show that from this point to this point this is this diagram and this other cat here from A to A that is my longitudinal one so the only thing that I think is left is to add a title where am I going to add a title? Hmm, I think I'm going to add a title here or here. Let's see, I'm going to add a title here. I'm sure you don't have all these lines here. You have a, a clear, clean spot here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add a title and I'm going to have some fun with my with my writing with my title because I cannot forget that pepper has two P's otherwise I'm gonna misspell it and you can copy as I go or create your own. I'm sure yours is going to be super interesting. So, Pepper. And if I want later, I can go with color. And color the title. But for now, This is going to be my study of a pepper. Thank you so much for following up. See you next time.